place. Obviously, you, you know you work closely with Dennis. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, the fights you've got in the gym and, and uh, what, what, what's got planned. Yeah, of course. We've got um, in, in our gym. Me and Dennis, is, I've been we've been going two years now. So in two years, when I first walked in the gym, there wasn't a single boxer in the gym. And the thing with Dennis in Dennis's gym is that. Such great fighters in the world champions like Clinton Woods, uh, myself, he's had um, McDonald Brothers in there, he's had. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people probably know that, but he had. Uh, yeah, he had McDonald Brothers, yeah, he took, he took Clinton all the way to the top. Liam Cameron, yeah, he's had some top top work with Amir Khan a lot, worked with Ricky Atten, got Ricky Atten fights in Las Vegas, yeah, against uh, Bungu and he had Claws all at Arena. Very good relationship with Bob Arrow. I think we're speaking to him over there actually. Um, so yeah, so for me, right, a lot you say a lot of people, right? Because Dennis, Dennis, I didn't want, don't want to say gone quiet. He had a lot of other stuff on his mind, right? Well publicised, um, his how ill his dad were, you know, a few other things, and he just had a little breakaway from boxing. Also, the gym how it was going at the time was a bit more of a fitness gym than a boxing gym. So he come to me, Dennis, and he says, "Listen, we need to get boxers back in the gym. We need champions back in this gym." So two years ago, when we took the gym over, we didn't have a single boxer. And now we've got 16 carded amateurs on the books, all good little fighters. We've got. And you, you train? I train, yeah, I train amateurs and pros, pal, yeah. Um, that's why I look so old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got Dan West, whose record now is 5 5 and 2. He, the, the, the one other draw he had, really thought he won it. He's been on the road a lot and he's bought good kids on the road, 6 and 0, 7 and 0, 10 and 0. The couple he's lost, I reckon he's lost two or three legit. Um, and just good kids, and just just simple as, just a bit better than him. But like I said, he will come and he will give anybody a go when he's fit. I'll, I'll be the first to tell him. Sometimes my honesty is going to get me into trouble, especially working higher profile. But I'll tell him straight, he weren't fit enough tonight. If he'd have been fitter, he'd have won that fight, right? But the problem with me is, right, I'm coming away, right. And I'm coming away from here thinking he should have won that. I should be happy with a draw on the road. You know what I mean? But I'm not like that. Dan's not like that. So we're going to be going on thinking, hey, just, if he'd have just got that last round. But I've also got another unbeaten pro, Sufjan Ahmed. He's 1-0. Oh. He's signed with Dennis. Signed with me and Dennis. See you next Friday. He's out next Friday, yeah. He's 1-0. Oh. He's been out training with, with, with in Fort Ventura. And we've also got Kel, obviously. Oh, yes. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, in regards to the sort of pros, are you yeah. still looking to... Lee, you, if you have to go, you can go in. If he has to go, you can go in. If he has to go, you can go in. Sorry about this, problem. No, 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 yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, just going to think about the, the pro side. So, yeah. in regard, like, are you still looking for like the young... Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that, sorry. The amateurs that you've got in your gym, yeah. are you hoping they get to... One million percent. ...take them... One, one million... That, that's my, my old trainer was a guy called Glyn Rhodes. Uh, and Glyn... Glyn... Glyn has had... Well, we used to promote years ago, but we had not really promote more, so it managed and trains fighters. But I started at Glyn's when I was 11. Uh, a good friend of mine, Carl Wilde, started at Glyn's when he was 11. Ross Birkinshaw started at Glyn's when he was 11. Lee Edwards, Jez Wilkin, we all started so long. And we all boxed pro for Glyn, and we all did well. We had some won titles, some didn't, but we all had good careers, and we all, we all held the zone. That's what I want for my kids. I want my kids, what, 11 and 12 year old, to see likes of Dan, to see likes of me seniors and people I think, that's what I want to do. I want to do that. The, the kids in, in, in my gym, my gym's in a rough area, right? So the kids what come in, I ain't got a single bad lad, but it was all probably going to go the wrong way, right? And I don't think one of them ever dreamed of boxing professional. And I have 14 and 50 year old kids coming up to me now saying, oh, when I go to college, shall I do sports science? So when I box pro, it'll help me out. That's what I love. That's what I want. I want fighters to come to me, obviously, right? Kel come to me. Um, there's, Probably on the back of that, some other fighters will probably come. I want, I welcome all fighters. That must be fantastic for the, for the young pros and amateurs. Oh, they like, love it. Like, you know, like an ex world. Uh, yeah, champion. and he's just one of the lads, right? He genuinely hasn't got. A, he'll come in gym and they'll all go quiet and he'll go, What's everybody going quiet for? And because Kel Brooks just walked in gym. But, but you think, Why has everybody gone quiet, right? But for them, it's a buzz. Obviously, with Kel training away, uh, I never spend a day at my gym. I'm in there seven days a week. But with Kel training away, I had to sacrifice a bit to go. So I sat down and I spoke to all the lads, and every one of them were over the moon. Not one of them were like, oh, well, he's not going to be here, he's not going to be here. I've got 
Kit, I've got Lee Edwards, who's my corner, uh, who's my second in corner. He helps me train the fighters and the amateurs when I'm not here. I've got Graham Dickinson helps me out. Also, like I said, Glyn Rhodes at Sheffield Boxing Centre. I was with Glyn 22 years. We still one massive family. So if I'm ever struggling, I ring. You remember Sam Sheedy? What box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I've had Sam Sheedy. Yeah, I'm boxed British. Should have won for a British title. Yeah. Was it the Facebook link? And yeah. It was in a hotel somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Bram yeah, Bram Lane. Yeah, in Bram Lane Hotel. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, um, so Sam Sheedy comes up and helps me out. Glenn sends his lads to come and help me, so we're really one big family, so I'm really lucky with that. Uh, but, like I said, it's, it's brought a lot of publicity to Jim, it's brought publicity to me, some good, some bad, but listen, I know not really phases me unless it's somebody who I respect. If it's someone what, what I respect and has got a valid point and not just somebody what has something to say for something to say, i listen. If not, Boxers and trainers, we want to have broad shoulders anyway. So when do you go um, to Future Venture? Yeah, Fort Venture. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take some of the lads with you? Yeah, I've just took, I've just took, uh, so far my was boxing next week. He's just had a great week over here with us. He loved it, great preparation. Great for them, just a different, you know. Great preparation, yeah, exactly. Takes them away, gets, shows them the difference in levels, uh, shows them the difference in, in the attitude of Kel and things like that, when it's business, it's time for business and things like that. I also took one of my seniors out, one of my amateurs, Conor Dobin, eh? and when I, when I go back next time, I'm taking another senior out, Mickey Ward, that's his name, Mickey Ward, yeah? Mickey Ward and Wade Savage. It don't look like, sounds like I made them up, doesn't it? Uh, so taking them out, and then hopefully, when it's school lollies, I'm going to be able to take some of my younger lads out. Um, so, when, when you're out, how long do you spend away probably from the gym? Well, the first, like I said, I've only had one fight with him. The first camp, it were a bit, let's just suck it and see, see how it goes. So I went out here for three weeks. Kel says, we're coming back for two days, we're coming back for three weeks. So I was like, right, it's a long time. I just had a, just had a little boy, you're only three months old. But end of day, right, it's sacrifices you've got to make. And that's what, that's what Glyn's taught me. That's what also, in one different way, that's what my dad taught me. My dad, my dad retired my career, he had to work away six months out a year just to put a roof over his head. So obviously I miss my boy and I miss my gym, but it's, it's putting food on the table. And it's not just that, I'd be lying if I say I don't love it. It's a great experience for me, I can't turn that. And it's not often, you know, yeah, you're an ex-world champion and what have you. Yeah, and, and, and the weird thing is, well, not weird, but I've known him 15 years, he's my pal as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you, right? yeah, so it's worked out, it's worked out really good. Um, okay, um, just on Kel, yeah. what's, uh, what's the latest with Kel? I know we spoke on camera, but... Uh... Yeah, that's fine. We just, we just, he's, he's, he's over there. He took himself over a month ago. So we were ticking over in gym, and he says, I'm going to fall Ventura. I says, why? Have we got out coming up? He went, no, I want to get over there, and I want to get in zone. I want to get in mode. So if I get a phone call, you're boxing eight weeks, boxing ten weeks, I'm ready to go. So I said, perfect. So I went, I can't go yet. I've got a bit of responsibilities over here. He went, don't matter. I'm going to go on my own. I'll get myself right, come on when you can. So I went over about a week, about two weeks ago, ten days ago, uh, and it would it would take it over, it were on it, so we've just put a bit of a bit of a plan in place. Um because we're gonna be looking at we spoke to Eddie and stuff, still no opponent, still no definite date, but it's gonna be probably middle of May, beginning of June, hopefully. So yeah, we'll hope, we'll hope so, yeah. So it's looking at probably gonna be either be eight or ten week or something like that. So he's well on his way. Is that going to be a 10 or 12 round? We're hoping, it's a big fight, Paul, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping. It's just, obviously, a lot of the big names are out at the minute, aren't they? So, uh, but like I say, Eddie's the man in here. Eddie's getting, getting, getting the fights left, right and centre. Uh, so, well, I trust him, Kel trusts him. Depending. If it's, listen, it all depends. Kel, at the minute, I think with the way he's on it, he could do a 147 and be fine. If it's a big fight at 154, we'll get him strong, he'll be strong enough and it'll be all right at that. It's, uh, it's a bit of a privilege for him that, that he's going to be all right at both ways. He's going to be good and be able to top back, box at top level at both ways. So, we don't know. If it's a 10 rounder against somebody, it might be a catch weight, it might be 150 ish. But we're hoping, we're hoping, we just want, he wants the big fights. Kel wants them now. He wants, he wants, he wants that world title. Yeah, he wants that world title fight. He wants them big names. He wants, he wants to cement his legacy. Right, he's already won his world title. He's already, he's up there with all the Sheffield greats, Clinton Woods, Nazi, Mamid, Bomber, Graham, all these top fighters, he's up there with them. But he wants to cement his legacy, he wants some big names. He wants to go over to the States, they love him over there, and he wants, he, he's a fighter for the States. I always loved American fighters myself, he's, he's did look, they love him over there. Slick, looks well, good looking kid, right, they will love him over there. As, as Eddie said, that by, you know, at least this year he's going to get pretty much going to get either a yeah. big fight or a world title fight. Yeah. Is, that, is that basically the plan? Yeah, definitely, 100%. If, if it's not next, well, 
might be hard if he's going to box May June, but hopefully it's a good name, a big name. 100% is a world title or a massive name by end of year. <laughs> because sometimes these fights don't have titles, not like that. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got your Adrian, you, yeah, you've got your Adrian Broners out there. You've got your Manny Pacquiao's out there. I don't even think he's got one. I love him to box Adrian Broner. That'd be a laugh. I mean, is he, is he having a con? I'm not, I'm not going to talk to much, but is, does he still? Has he washed his hands? Well, but I'm not. Uh, well, he's boxing Terence Crawford, isn't he? Yeah. So end of day, that's that fight's forgot about. Yeah. It's probably. It's. It's. St it hopefully, it'll still be there at the end of year. Uh, I mean, I, I, as a fan, I, love him, I, kind of, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, all I'm trying to do is just get him ready for whoever's boxing next. Keep him, keep him ticking over, keep him in good shape, keep him in a good mental place, which is, as soon as we've got a date, as soon as we've got a opponent, we'll think about him and everybody else, we'll just forget about him. How do you see the Khan in the uh, Listen, I've got a lot of respect for Amir Khan, I think he's a top, top, top Joe fighter, right? Um, the levels to your Alvarez's and your Golovkin's and your Crawford's and that, they're a big step up. So, which he showed when he boxed Alvarez, showed when he boxed Garcia, do you know what I mean? He's, I think he's a top, top, top fighter. I think he will look, I think he will look good for maybe three, four, five rounds. But Terence Crawford's a different grade for me. He's, even though he's moved up to well away, he's strong, he's a big lad, he's slick, he hits hard. I think I could see him getting him out of here. 12. But that's no disrespect to Amir Khan, right? I think that's just that's just my opinion because I think so highly of Terence Crawford. Still think very highly of Amir and a top fighter look and I think he will be in the fight, but I think that next level will creep in towards the end of the fight. Um, just to next week, how yeah. many Well we've got Dennis Hobson, we've got I've got myself times boxing, I've got one, I've got Sufi Ahmed, but I'm also gonna go in the corner and help Glyn. With uh, Tommy Frank, who's boxed a Commonwealth title against. This is on Free Sports, isn't it? Free Sports, yeah. yeah, Free Sports next Friday night. And the top of the bill will be a mega fight, I'm telling you. Commonwealth yeah. title, both fighters are good kids, right? Both gonna have a good. We've got two top young pros, Kane Salvin, Keenan Wayne, right? They're both having the second fight. They're, so, they're, they're, they're top quality kids to watch. So it's gonna be a good fight. We've also uh, another lad what works with me, Dennis Richard Towers. Richard Towers has got, um, he's got a good lad on. Swedish lad, uh, yeah. I don't even want to try and pronounce his name. Yeah. Right, I think he's 7 and 0, so Richard, Richard's got him on. Uh, me and Richard will be working together, he'll be helping me with stuff, I'll be helping him with him. So it's a top night of talent, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And people want to get tickets on the area, but how do they get tickets? Get yeah, tickets in the area, get me on Facebook, John Fuchs, right, message me, or Sufian Ahmed, message him, right. Come and see us at the gym and we will get some tickets. Thank you very much. No problem at all, my man. Alright.